Good afternoon and welcome to 3 o'clock with SAC. I'm Marisol Diaz, Communications and Digital Manager. Give me a second while I welcome our Spanish-speaking neighbors. Buenas tardes, soy Marisol Diaz, gerente de comunicaciones digitales y bienvenidos a 3 en punto con SAC. Si quieren acceso al programa en español, favor de marcar el número que aparece en la pantalla que es 646-749-3122 y cuando le contestan la llamada, marque la contraseña que es 779-328-221. Si quieren ver episodios pasados, los pueden buscar aquí en nuestro Facebook en la sección de videos y también en YouTube. All right, now I'll go ahead and pass it over to the moderator of the day who will introduce today's topic. Hi everyone, my name is Marlene Zaran. I am the public health coordinator here at the Southside Organizing Center. Uh, today's topic is really important. We're gonna be talking about lead and then I have some COVID-19 updates for you guys uh, regarding the Delta variant and also um, vaccination sites that you can go to to get tested. Um, also, I just wanna say that Marisol already has said this already, but our, in the comment section, you'll find the interpretation line to call and the um, code to put in when you're going into that call. And then also I wanna say that our YouTube and Facebook pages have our re recorded Spanish and English um, live forums. So you have access to those at all times um, through those platforms. So that being said, I'd like to introduce our guest today, Michael Larson. He's a manager at the Department of Environmental Health and Community Wellness for 16th Street Community Health Centers. Um, and he's gonna be talking to, to us about lead and the importance of knowing um, you know, exposure to lead and everything that you can do regarding that. So let's bring Michael on. Hello, Hi, good Michael. afternoon. Thank you for coming on. It's a, it's a great to have you on, and I'm really excited to see what you have to say about this topic. Thank you so much, Marlene. Um, as she introduced me, my name is Michael Larson, or Mike, um, and I am a manager here at the Department of Environmental Health and Community Wellness at 16th Street. Um, and I'll be sharing a short presentation with you today about the hazards associated with lead in the home and lead poisoning and the effect that it can have, especially on young children. Um, we'll share some information specifically about what you can do uh, in your homes to protect um, your loved ones and also what we do here at 16th Street Community Health Center and our lead outreach program to help our community um, deal with deal with these hazards as they arise. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, um, so our letter outreach program has been active for more than 20 years at 16th Street Community Health Center. Um, and we have been working with the Southside community uh, to find and mitigate the hazards associated with lead whenever possible. Um, as you can see, we have some very fine people uh, who work in our department. Uh, as part of the larger 16th Street clinics on the South Side, we operate out of the Greenfield building um, here at uh, Chavez and Greenfield. Um, we are, before we're going to get too far into it, I'd like to share a little bit about just what is lead and how it can affect you. Uh, so lead is a natural substance that can be toxic to humans. It's found in the environment in trace quantities, um, but we use it in all sorts of things in manufacturing and in goods that we have in our home and, or have been for years uh, until it was uh, banned in some substances like paint in the 1970s. Uh, however, that residual lead still is around and can be in our homes and around our workplaces uh, and outside in our yards. So it's important that we kind of keep track of it. Um, when lead enters the body, it can cause health problems and affect human development, especially in young children. And that's why lead poisoning is such an issue. Um, no amount of lead in the blood um, is good that we would like to make sure that none of our kids have any lead in their blood. Um, however, um, the more that has been accumulated, the worse the issues can be. So 
Lead poisoning specifically is the disease that's caused by swallowing or inhaling lead. Lead is a poison that can damage a child's brain and cause learning and behavior problems. Children that have been affected by lead poisoning um, report having more difficult times learning in the classroom. Um, behavioral challenges are reported by their parents and their teachers um, and other developmental challenges that can come as well. Again, the more lead in the blood, the more likely that these are gonna have lasting effects on the child. Um, and the reason why it's so potent for little kids is, a, well, there's a couple of reasons. One, little kids spend a lot of their time on the ground and a lot of the lead in the home can be found kind of in the carpet or in the dust that's on the ground. They also put a lot of things in their mouth. Um, and so that is a way that they can ingest it. It's not just like specifically eating lead, but it's just putting things in your mouth that may have lead dust on them or contact that can affect children. Little children also play outside in dirt, which can be a source. And we'll talk a little bit about other sources and where it can be found in the home. Um, so you can see in this picture that we have a number of different things that are identified. We at 16th Street um, recognize and educate people about three main areas where you can get contamination. The first is lead paint, and that is paint in houses that were built before 1978 may have lead paint in their homes. It's especially common on windowsills, but it can be on walls and stuff, and it peels over time. And those paint peelings fall off on the floor, they can be found on windowsills, they can be found on the exterior house and the siding of the house. Um, and can be inhaled or ingested by small children. Uh, the second source of lead that we talk about is soil, um, especially um, on the outside of a house, any paint that is flaked off the siding or off the windows can then fall into the soil that's right next to the house. And children who go out and play in the soil and maybe they're having fun and building mud pies or something like that, but they're actually, uh, that soil can be contaminated with lead. And if they have it on their fingers and they don't wash their hands thoroughly before they put something in their mouth, they can ingest lead that way. And then the third way is through our water. Um, many of the pipes in Milwaukee that connect our sewer systems to our homes um, are lead pipes. Um, and people can have lead fixtures and lead piping within their homes as well. And lead can leach off of those pipes um, and into the drinking water. And so lead can be absorbed that way. Um, not only are small children at risk, but so are pregnant or breastfeeding women um, or women who may become pregnant also should be careful because of the lead found in the paint, water and soil that they can come in contact with. Um, there are a few other less common sources, but sometimes um, cookery pots and pans, especially if they're imported from another country, sometimes um, the, the clay pots and pans have lead in them. Um, you can also find it at a work site if you have a parent that works in construction specifically um, or in, in a yard that may have contaminated lead and if they come home, they can track it home on their feet, on their boots and on their clothing and um, track it into the carpet of the home as well. Okay, so what do we do about it? Um, here at 16th Street Community Health Center, we are focused on education. Um, we serve the Southside community and are doing our best to teach as many people as possible about these hazards so that they can be aware of their that, them in their homes and mitigate them. So to that end, we do a lot of tabling at community events. We will go to um, especially Head Start programs or daycares where they have young kids. We'll do education with the parents and the teachers there to teach them about it. And we also uh, will go door to door and just knock on doors or visit parks and talk to families um, and make sure that they have the education about what they can do. Um, we do lead testing. So we test um, even with, I mean, all children should be tested with their primary care provider. And certainly 16th Street does that when people who are patients of ours come in for their appointments. But the lead outreach program reaches out to non-patients as well in our community. And we can actually do the lead testing right there in the home with the family for convenience. Um, and then we can find out what the blood lead levels of the family are and set them up in our lead outreach program if they have elevated levels. Um, we do home visits and assessments. So when you're part of our lead outreach program, we will come out to your home. Um, we will do an inventory of your home and walk through it with you and point out potential hazards that we see in your home. Um, we'll do an assessment of uh, the various 
problematic areas and help you to learn how to mitigate those as much as possible. Part of that includes what we call interim controls. That's where we are teaching you um, specifically, there's a specific way to clean. You wanna use a disposable wipe, like a baby wipe um, or a Swiffer um, for floors, for hard floors. You wanna use a disposable wipe to wipe away lead dust or the paint chips um, so that that can be thrown away. Uh, it's important to wear gloves while you're cleaning and to wash your hands very thoroughly when you're done so you don't have any lead dust on your hands. Um, and so you wanna get that out of there. You don't wanna just dust it because that spreads the lead dust into the air. Uh, likewise, vacuuming. Um, we have special HEPA vacs that we'll bring in and use to help you vacuum your carpet. Those HEPA vacs will pull that lead right out of the carpet um, and contain it without, without dispersing it back into the air. And so having a good HEPA vac is another way to clean to do that. So we'll do those interim controls and that's up to and including sometimes if necessarily, obviously the best thing is to abate the home, but that can be expensive and there are programs that can help you do that. And we'll help connect you to those programs um, and see if you qualify to have um, somebody come in and actually take the lead out of real you know, replace windows, remove paint that is contaminated by lead and replace it. Um, however, um, in the meantime, even doing something as simple as covering a windowsill with duct tape. Windowsills are especially bad because they're about the same height as a toddler. Um, it's mouth. So if a toddler is looking out the window, they'll put their mouth or their chin right on the windowsill where there's potential lead paint. So we will cover those with uh, duct tape just to give a, a, a level of protection for that sill um, in the interim before um, you know a full abatement or window replacement can be done. And then um, finally, we also do water filter and we give and we install water filters as for a program through the city where we'll install the filters in your home for the faucets that you use for drinking uh, and for cooking so that we can pull that that can help mitigate the lead that's in the water um, and help keep your drinking water safe we'll even give you some replacement filters that you can use to put in there when the current filter that comes with the the brand new thing runs out the filter cartridge runs out um, so that you have some that can last you for, for a couple of years before they need to be replaced. Um, and then we provide resources for homeowners. We connect homeowners and educate them about resources that are available, whether that's the Lead Safe Homes program, which is a program that the state runs that helps to replace those windows um, and get the lead completely out of the home or other programs that might exist in your community to help you with whatever you need. Finally, one of the biggest advantages of being a part of 16th Street is that um, we're connected to everything else that 16th Street does. So if we go into your home and we find out that you need information about, um, about COVID testing, or you need a primary care physician, or you need connection to behavioral health services or anything like that, um, we can connect you with the larger 16th Street Community Health Center and help you identify those things that we, programs that we run in the rest of our organization that could help you and your family. Uh, that is it for my presentation. Thank you, Marlene. Um, awesome. I guess at this time, um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Let, let me just check the comment section really quick if we see any questions. Um, I don't see any questions, but um, Michael Comba shared um, shared a link about a, a great group working on holding the city accountable um, for lead. So that's in the in the comment section. But other than that, I don't see any um, questions right now. If any do come up, I will let you know. Well, I'd encourage anybody if um, if you want to, if you're interested in the lead outreach program, perhaps you have children, uh, especially under the age of six. That's the target audience that we we approach. If you have children that you feel um, it would be beneficial for, to connect to the lead outreach program, or maybe you have grandchildren or nieces and nephews or just anybody in your neighborhood, please connect them with us here at 16th Street. Um, uh, for sake of convenience, um, you can send an email to me. My email address is mlarson, that's M-L-A-R-S-O-N, at S-S-C-H-C dot org. Um, and I can help connect you into the right place. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. And 
I'll let you know if any other questions come up in the near future. Wonderful. Thank you, Marlene. And thanks for all the good work that the Southside Organizing Center is doing. Thank you so much. All right. Great work. Um, great information from Michael today. I really appreciated him coming on and giving us those updates. Um, so now I'm going to quickly go over the current vaccination numbers that we're seeing uh, in, Mil in Wisconsin and Milwaukee. So let me quickly share my screen here so you can see all of that data. So this is the uh, Department of Health Services Wisconsin COVID dashboard, um, and they have a specific dashboard for COVID vaccinations for Wisconsin residents. And we'll put that link for you guys in the comments section. Um, but as you can see here, 51.3% of individuals um, who live in Wisconsin are currently, have, have received at least one dose of their COVID-19 vaccine, um, which is around roughly 3 million individuals. Um, so in order for us to get to herd immunity, we need to reach 70 to 80 percent. So we're almost there, but more people do need to get vaccinated during this time, especially with the Delta variant coming up rise, um, which I can talk more about in a little bit. Uh, so if we see here, um, based by, by race, the American Indian um, community has 34 percent of individuals who have received their first COVID vaccine. The Asian community has 51% of those individuals that have received their first COVID vaccine. The Black or African American community has 27% um, per of those individuals have received their vaccine. And the white community, 47% of those individuals have received their first COVID-19 vaccine. Um, if we're looking at the Latino OAX or Hispanic community, we'll see that 38% of those individuals have had their first COVID vaccine. And um, by age group, uh, the highest number of individuals that are currently vaccinated are those that are 65 and older, um, coming at 83.5%. Um, the lowest number of individuals vaccinated are those ages 12 to 15 years old. Um, they have accessibility to the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, if you have not vaccinated your child yet, please do so by going to a vaccination clinic that's near you. Um, you can go to vaccines.vaccine.org and you can find the nearest vaccination site to your location. When you do go vaccinate your child, you should bring your ID um, or just, you know, proof of guardianship. Um, and uh, you can get your child vaccinated that way. Um, but that being said, if we look at Milwaukee, when we look at Milwaukee's numbers, we'll see that 49% of the of individual residents have at least received their first dose. And then um, people that have completed both doses or their full series um, are 46% of those individuals. So we're doing good. We're doing good. Um, I did just watch a... Let me stop sharing my screen real quick. I did just watch a debrief um, from the Department of Health Services with Tom Barrett, Mayor Tom Barrett, and the Secretary of State. And they did state that 83% of cases that are in hospitals right now are from the Delta variant. So this Delta variant is moving extremely fast and it's leading to more hospitalizations and deaths. Majority of individuals that are dying from COVID-19 from the Delta variant are those that are not vaccinated. So if you are not vaccinated, please do go get vaccinated so you can have that immunity. And, um, you know, at least you won't, if, even if you do get exposed to COVID-19 um, or this Delta variant, you will not need to get hospitalized or um, lead to death. So that's why it's important to get vaccinated right now. Um, so that being said, uh, they still condone wearing a mask in all crowded areas. Of course, uh, we just had the game, so we did win. So go Bucks. 
Um, but there are about 100,000 individuals at that uh, game in Deer District, uh, all crowded together. Um, majority of individuals were not wearing masks. And so if you do go into a crowded area, we do recommend you still wear a mask. And so does the Department of Health Services um, recommends this as well because you are not aware who is vaccinated around you and who is not. If you are vaccinated, you're completely fine. Uh, but if you are not vaccinated, you should be wearing a mask at all times when you are in those types of social events. Um, and then the hotspots for vaccination, for those that hotspots for COVID-19 rates in Wisconsin is the Southeast area and Fox Valley region. So there's cases that are rising in those areas um, and have led to severe increases in hospitalizations. Um, according to the Department of Health Services, no part of our state is adequately vaccinated. And that being said, we do need to get more people vaccinated during this time so we can um, have a large portion of our population vaccinated, fully vaccinated. Uh, for the Delta variant, the Delta variant is the main concern because it spreads so fast. So there are other variants of the COVID-19 virus, but um, the main one that's spreading the fastest and the one that they're finding the most in hospitalizations right now is the Delta variant. The way that they figure out um, which variant it is, is by um, taking, you know, a sample of your blood, checking your, checking the DNA of the virus in that blood or just doing like a COVID test and they'll figure out like the they'll do what's called a um it's called a PCR test and what they do is they check the genetic DNA of that virus that is in you and um based on the genes and how the genes look compared to the other COVID-19 strand, they'll see like, okay, this is the Delta variant. It looks like this. These are the genome sequences that identify the Delta variant. And so um, it's a main concern. It's a very high concern right now. Um, and one way to reduce transmission is to decrease, um, is to get vaccinated and decrease the amount of socialization that is currently happening. Um, so when you do get vaccinated, you do reduce transmission. And um, that's honestly the right way to do it right now. Um, so uh, there has been an increase in Wisconsin hospitalizations going from 70 to 143 cases in just one week. Uh, and one surgeon, actually Dr. Brittany Cobia, um, she recently shared her experience and she is begging individuals to get vaccinated because uh, she's been working one-on-one -on -one with those that are hospitalized and those individuals are asking the doctor in their severe cases and when they're on ventilators to give them the COVID vaccine. And unfortunately at that point, when you're in that type of distress and your body is um, fighting, trying to fight off the COVID-19 virus, um, there's there's no possible way to give or administer that COVID-19 vaccine and, um, you know, make sure you're okay because the vaccine does not cure you from the virus. The vaccine is supposed to prevent those symptoms from happening or from even rising to a point of death, right? The same way with the flu vaccine. You might get the flu vaccine and think that, oh, I'm not going to get the flu this year because I'm vaccinated with the flu. No, that's not the case all of the time. You might get um, exposed to the virus still, but your symptoms are just not going to be as severe because your immune system can recognize that this is that virus and it understands how to fight it off based on being exposed to what was in the vaccine, right? So that's um, what I'm going to say about getting vaccinated right now in COVID-19 numbers. I do have a link for you guys where you can go and check out COVID vaccine sites um, in the Milwaukee area. It was published by onmilwaukee.com, which is a great resource in the community um, to get your community information and um, consistent like community events that are happening. They cover all of that. So um, you can see that, uh, let me share my screen real quick. 
And uh, you can see here um, state resources. These are all state resource links that you can register. You can go on. You can go to the um, vaccine provider map. You put in your zip code, and it shows you all of the current vaccination locations near you, and you can identify which vaccine you want. So if you want Pfizer, Moderna, or the um, Johnson & Johnson, you can specify which one you would like. Um, healthcare systems that offer COVID vaccinations right now is Freuder and Medical College of Wisconsin, um, Advocate Aurora Health, uh, Ascension, and Pro Health. They're all offering vaccinations right now. You can check out community health centers, the Gerard Ignis um, Indian Health Center, Progressive Community Health Centers, Outreach Community Health Centers, Milwaukee Health Centers, 16th Street Community Health Center, and Milwaukee VA Medical Center. You can also go to these the following pharmacies that have COVID vaccinations available. You can go to Meyer, Walgreens, Hyatt Pharmacy, Infinity Pharmacy, CVS, Weltopia Pharmacy, Good Value Pharmacy, Findlay Foundation, and North Shore Pharmacy. Um, and then these are just city and county health resources that you can check out and other resources. So there you go. There's that. We'll put the link for you guys in the comment section. I just want to go ahead and reiterate, um, you know, do go get vaccinated. It's the best thing that you can do for yourselves right now. Um, I'm fully vaccinated. I know I am less worried when I do go into a crowded area or an event. Um, I do still wear my mask from time to time. Um, if I do start to feel uncomfortable based on, you know, how close people are to me, um, which I think is still fine to do. You can definitely do that. Uh, so that being said, I want to let you guys know of the guests that's coming on tomorrow. So tomorrow we have Ben Sanchez um, from the NIDC. He's going to be going over housing resources. Um, so that is a pre-recorded video for you guys. And I hope you guys join us tomorrow. Um, other than that, I am very happy that the Bucks won. You know, this is going to be a great year for us. And it's going to be a great economic change um, coming through for Milwaukee as a whole, um, because this does give us so much exposure moving forward. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Go enjoy the weather. Has this live forum been informative and useful to you? What part of the forum could be improved or changed to make it better? Please take a quick survey that's located in the comments section so that we can keep 3 o'clock with SOC going for residents. Thank you for tuning in.